Uh, I should start with a quick announcement. That is that today I got to run after class. So I'm going to run after class. I'm going to have no office hours today. Uh, but if anyone wants to meet me in the afternoon, you're free to email me and I'll have office hours in the afternoon. And if not, I'll, I'll move my office hours from today to tomorrow after class. So tomorrow I'll stick around for an hour after class. Okay, so um, so uh, we are going to learn, we're going to finish learning every possible derivative you could think of, which we're, we were already really close to do. And uh, only like three functions left to complete the list. So let's complete the list because we really, really we know how to do this now, even though we haven't realized. Because turns out implicit differentiation is, is just the answer. So um, I'm still on 3.5, this is the, the last part of 3.5. The derivative of the arc sine. So the derivative of the arc sine of x. So I already said implicit differentiation. So that's what we got to, I mean, I think the hardest part here is going to be remembering what the hell arc sign is because I'm betting, I'm willing to bet money that we don't remember. But uh, so let's see. Um, so, one thing we like to do, we just realized now is pretty useful, is calling the function you want to find the derivative of. Uh, just call it y. So why is a function of x? So normally I do implicit differentiation when I have an equation that I don't know how to solve, uh, but I still want to find y prime. Here I want to find y prime. The, uh, so if I was going to do implicit differentiation right away, I would take the derivative of both sides and I would have the problem that I don't know how to do this yet. So I'm going to go the opposite way. We're going to unsolve this equation. So, let's see what, what arc sign means. Arc sign is the inverse of sine. So, if y is the arc sine of x, well, that means that um, y is one of the angles um, that has that have sine equal to x. But this is, this is not enough because the thing is, there's a lot of angles that have sine x. There's a lot of possible y's, but I'm, I'm only referring, there's only one of them that I call arc sine. So, <clears throat> which, um, so which one of them, what range does y have to be in? Uh, what is, the, what is the range of arc sign is the question. This came up in your homework, the first homework. Does anyone remember what the range of arc sign is? Oh, well, uh, I, I wasn't expecting that answer. Thank you, Dustin. The answer is that uh, y has to be between negative pi over two and pi over two. 
arc sine gives you the one, the unique angle that has the sign you you gave it, and that is between negative ninety degrees and ninety degrees. Um, if I plot sine. Here's pi over two, here's negative pi over two. Um, maybe I should say x equals sine of y. So now I'm doing the y-axis here and the x-axis here. No, shouldn't do that. Should draw it vertically. So um, if I do x equals sine of y, it's not the graph of a function, it's just the graph of sine uh, that's flipped uh, 90 degrees. So here, y is uh, pi over two, y is negative pi over two, and arc sine is just this part in here. <clears throat> All right, awesome. It's not Monday for dust in the teams. It is for me. Oh okay. yeah. Um so this is what arc sine is. So if y equals arc sine x, that means that x equals sine of y. Like I said before. And well, if I don't say anything else, that means I'm describing this whole black curve over here. That is not, it's not the graph of a function, but like we, with all these implicit differentiation problems, we can still do it and it will give us an answer that works for really for every, every graph that we can find in there. But the main point is that if I write this equation, x equals sine of y, I definitely know how to take derivatives there. As long as I remember the chain rule. So, when I take d dx on both sides, um, What I get is, well, on the left side, I have the derivative of x with respect to x. That's just, that's just, um, well, that's the power rule. That's one. So on the left, I have one. And on the right, um, the only thing I need to be worried about, that's not cosine of y, because I'm taking derivative with respect to x, but there's a y in there. I have to use the chain rule instead. Um, The chain rule. The chain rule says take derivative of the outside with respect to y, and then take the derivative of y respect to x. And the derivative of sine of y respect to y now is what I think it should be. It's cosine y. And here is dy dx. The x dy dx is just exactly what I, what I want to compute. Um, I'm trying to find dy dx is, is the derivative of arc sine. This is what I want to solve for. So, um, well, now I solve for uh, y prime. It's one over cosine of y. So that is the derivative of arc sine. It's one over cosine y. Um, 
it's not the way you'll say it written because it's better if it's just in terms of facts. But basically we're done. If I gave you know if I gave you x and y, or if I gave you x, you could compute the arc sign and find the derivative. Um, but I'd rather do this without computing the arc sign in between. Are there any questions before I uh, turn the page over? Not well, I know Dustin is awake, so that's good. <clears throat> okay, um, so like I was saying, basically, now I know the derivative. The problem is that it's in terms of the function, and I mean, normally it's fine because normally I don't know if I could do anything, but um, this time I want to simplify because, because I know I get a nice answer in the end. But in general, you don't have to simplify things unless I tell you to. Um, so, so I want this in terms of x. Using the stuff that I already know about the relation between x and y, which is that the sign of y is x and the uh, and y is between negative pi over two and pi over two. So, <clears throat> um, well, if this, if that was sine of y instead of cosine of y, that would be that would just be x. That would be right. That would be done. But it's not. So I need to basically rewrite this using sine. How can I relate the sine and the cosine? There's, um, there's some trig identities that tell me how sine and cosine are related. There's more than one. There's the one that I used on Thursday to compute the derivative of cosine on Thursday or in the videos on Saturday, I don't remember. There's one that I used the other day, uh, which was not the one I'm gonna use now. There's another one, which is my favorite identity of all time. What happens to sine and cosine? Shy. Um, kind of looking back on the notes, there's like a. Actually, I think he just said it, didn't he? What did he say? It, it, it says, "Sorry, I'm all scatterbrained." CSCX. I kind of I wasn't gonna say some that, but that might be correct. Oh. Do you want? I don't agree <laughs> with Matthew. Uh, first of all, that's not a. That's not, I, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, that's not an identity. That's just a function. Um, there's, there's a part in the notes looking back where it's like sign and then you have like the prime symbol parentheses X parentheses equals cosine parentheses X parentheses. Would that have something? Yeah, like that. Is that? Uh, well, I guess that does relate sine and cosine. <laughs> But that's <laughs> what I'm thinking of. Uh, so this will be telling us that this is that this goes like this. But oof, then, then I'm just I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to. I want. I want to do just algebra to so, to find what this function one over cosine y is. I don't want to introduce more derivatives. But Matthew said what I wanted someone to say though. Um, second time's a term. Uh, the sine squared plus cosine squared is one, which is the most important thing to ever happen to a triangle. So, 
So this means that probably I can solve for the cosine in terms of the sine here. Uh, this means that cosine squared of y is one minus sine squared. So that's nice because on the left, I'm gonna have just the cosine. On the right, I'm gonna have some stuff, but it's gonna involve only the sine, which is the one thing I know about. So this means that cosine is one of the square roots of one minus sine squared y. And in principle, it could be either. Um, but, uh, well, it's not, um, it's the positive one. Now the question is why? So yeah. cosine of y is root. The root of uh, one minus sine squared y. So the question is, is cosine positive or negative? If I knew that, I, I would know which route to take. And I'm, uh, I wrote here that y, the, the angle I'm taking the cosine of is between negative pi over two and pi over two. Um, if y is in this interval, I know what the cosine is like because cosine Cosine starts at one. Um, so I'm in this part here. This means that the cosine is positive. So, um, so I'm supposed to take the positive square roots. How does that mean cosine's positive? Uh, because, well, if you look at the graph, I just draw it better. If you look at the graph of cosine, so here's negative pi over two, and here's positive pi over two. Oh, what, what am I doing? So if you, if you know, or you look up the graph of cosine, you know that when the, when the, when the input is exactly between this point and the other points, here the graph is above the y-axis, which means the function is positive. So for example, cosine of negative one is 0.54, uh, which is positive. If you go past pi over two or, or negative pi over two, the, um, the graph, dives under the under the x the x axis that makes it negative but here it's above the so the point is that it's above the 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 x the x axis does that make sense yeah i get it All right <clears throat> so um i mean i know it's confusing to keep track of the where you are in the circle or, I mean, another way to see it would be to say that if your angle in the circle is between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, that means that x is in here on the right side of the circle. And on the right side of the circle, cosine is positive because it's the x coordinate. Um, cosine, sine. <clears throat> okay, so I'm basically basically done. Uh, cosine of y equals the positive square root of one minus sine squared y. I just said that this was sine y was x. That's the one thing I know about y. So. I can just replace that by x. And that means that the derivative of arc sine is 
which is what I was writing here, equals one over root of one minus x squared. That's it, that's the derivative of arcsine. This is worth memorizing this formula. Uh, especially in case you ever have to answer the question, what function has derivative uh, one divided by root one minus x squared? Because then, because the answer is not at all obvious. You would think you, you, if, if I was gonna guess a function that has this derivative, I would start writing square roots of one over minus x squared and trying to write chain rules that will make this um, work out. But there's, there, the thing is the function, uh, the function that has square uh, derivative one or root one minus x squared is arc sine, <clears throat> which um, I feel like it's a very interesting answer that we got. Wait, so where did you get the x squared again? Say that again? Uh, where did you get the x squared again? The x squared? Uh, well, I had sine of, so this is sine of y squared. And what I know about y is that it equals, uh, it's sine equals x. So the thing inside this square is just x squared. It's just x and then I'm squaring it. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> so this is what it looks like. So this is the original function. And This is the derivative. So the, um, as you can see, the domains are almost the same. <clears throat> so what do we see? What, what I see, what, what the, very interesting thing that happens is that here arc sine arc sine is pretty much vertical or actually at the at the end point at one comma pi over two sine is horizontal so um so it's it's the flit graph is going to be vertical and a vertical function if you remember it's not differentiable uh, and that makes that makes the derivative have an asymptote uh, there. The derivative of arc sine approaches uh, positive infinity here, and the same the same thing happens here becomes vertical. But now, uh, well, no, it's the same. It's going vertical. It's becoming vertical, uh, but it's going up, not down, which uh, makes the derivative go to positive infinity. And then it's always going up. Arc sine is always going up. Uh, and that makes the derivative always positive. And the point with the, the smallest slope is at zero, where it turns out that the slope is one. <clears throat> Which, I mean, all of this would make sense also if we just drew, we know the derivative of sine, we know that what the tangent line is, we could always just flip the graph. And that would, if you, if you, take, if you take a tangent line and you flip it, it would still be tangent. So you could compute the slope of that. So this is arc sine and its derivative. Um, so arc sine is not differentiable at one or negative one because they uh, because they become vertical there. Okay. So the next one we're going to do is arc tangents, which is even more interesting. Mm. 
derivative of arctan. So arctan, um, so it's just gonna be exactly the same, except for the trick part. Um, I'm gonna write y equals y equals arctan of x, and I'm gonna say that I want to find ty dx or y prime, because this is gonna be the derivative of arctan. And I don't think you would be able to guess this derivative if you didn't look it up first, honestly. I find it very surprising. Derivative of arctan, um, sorry, if I have y equals arctan x, just like before, that means that y has tangent x. That's what it means to be inverse functions. But like before, there's a lot of the different angles um, that have the same tangent. Basically, you take any angle and you add 180 degrees, however many times you get the same tangent. So um, the, the special one, one that we call tangent is the one, uh, well, just like, uh, it's just like arc sign actually. Except that now y cannot be pi over two because pi over two doesn't have a tangent. Uh, because then we both divide in by zero. This is so treacherous because it doesn't it doesn't draw the same things in the in the screen and in the tablet. Okay, so um, so I'm gonna do it exactly exactly like I did it before. Um, I have this equation, and I'm gonna take the derivative on both sides. And on this side, I'm gonna use the derivative of tangent, which I know, and then use the chain rule. And on the right side, it's just gonna be one. So the chain rule, Again, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, but don't be tempted to say that this is secant squared of y, because it's not, uh, because that's the answer for d10 y dy. Um, the variable in there is very important. So instead, what I need to do is multiply the derivative of the outside respect to the inside times the derivative of the inside. And derivative of tangent is secant squared. So secant squared of y times y prime equals one. <clears throat> and now, so, so now that's the derivative, it's one over secant. And just like before, this would be a perfectly valid answer, except that it's very interesting to write it in terms of facts. So I should do that. Are there any questions? Okay. Where did the square go? You mean where did the square come from? Where did the square come from? Uh, I mean, we, we did this derivative a few days ago and that's just the answer we got. I mean, tangent, so the way this went, the answer is we already, we know this. The answer is I know this by heart. But tangent is sine over cosine. So we took the derivative using the quotient rule and the quotient rule has the square of the denominator in there. And that's the, that's the square that come, it's the square that we get. I think you oh, mean that in oh. like the y prime. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Matthew. Y prime equals secant squared of y. Okay, so just like before, 
I know that the tangent of y is x, and I know the interval um, in which y lives. I'm going to use some trig identities to relate sequence. Now I want to relate sequence squared to tangents. And well, maybe, you know, the thing is secant squared is tangent squared plus one. So that's all there is to it. If you, and if you don't remember, uh, you take this identity and you divide by cosine squared and you get that one over cosine squared of y equals sine squared y divided by well, cosine squared of y plus one. So that's what you get when you divide the most important identity by cosine squared. And that is just saying that the secant secant squared equals tangent squared plus one. So <clears throat> one over secant squared then, which I guess one over secant squared is cosine squared. But for some reason, I would rather have secant squared because I know that's related to tangents is one over the tangent squared of y plus one. And now that's just uh, tangent of y is x. That's the one thing I know. So tangent squared is just gonna be x squared. So the derivative of our tangent is this extremely simple function. One over x squared plus one. <clears throat> and that's it. So if we're doing a problem with arctan like involved in it, we don't have to like go through this whole process again, right? No. Um, okay. This, I, if I were you, I would really, I would memorize this formula. If you look in the book, you'll see for, you know, for all six trigonometric functions, secant, cosecant, cotangent, sine, cosine, you'll see <clears throat> the the derivative of, of their inverses. But I don't, I've never in my life memorized the derivative of arc secant, you know? So those I would look up, the derivative of arc tangent and arc sine, I would memorize. Um, <clears throat> Wait, so if we were to um, use y prime is equal to one over secant squared of y, would we have to show our work or just like, could we use that? I mean, if I, if I ask you to take a derivative involving arc 10, you can say, I memorized the, ten, the derivative of arc 10. Okay. Um, basically, I think, so if you look in the book, anything that you see in a blue square is something you could have memorized, you know? <clears throat> so if I give you, you know, like the derivatives in your homework, those are not found in a blue square in your book. So I don't, nobody in their right mind would memorize those, but we should memorize the derivative of arc then. Okay, let's do a graph. Um, so if now, if I take y equals arc 10, so very quick was that domain of arc 10, the domain of arc 10 is a range of tangents, which is all real numbers. My face is on the way. Um, and then the derivative is one over one plus x squared. And before this was black and the derivative was red. So the black one is arctangent and the, the red one is its derivative. <clears throat> so one, the, the domain of both is every number. 
So R10, R10 has a derivative everywhere. And you can see, I can see a lot of things that make sense to me. Uh, for example, um, the function, so this is the function, this is the derivative. The function is always increasing, it's always going up. So um, the derivative is always above the axis, even it's a, it's only a little bit above the axis, but um, <clears throat> but but it's always it never crosses below it. Um, as we go to infinity, f starts to look horizontal. And f prime uh, approaches zero, which you can just look at it and do the limit. <clears throat> it's very easy limit. The degree of the denominator is, is bigger. It's a rational function. But I'm very surprised to get a rational function here. <clears throat> like, why, why would I? No, normally, you know, I take derivative of an exponential, I get something with an exponential. I take derivative of a trig function, I get another trig function. But here, I don't. I get 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is, to me, a, a great mystery, I think. Um, and on the left, also the function becomes horizontal, so the derivative approaches zero. <clears throat> and one thing we'll see in a few months, well, no, we'll never see this, <laughs> but uh, one thing that comes out of here is that if you look at this area, the area under this curve, the, this area under the curve, is um, it's pi, it's pi square. If, if this was in meters, it's pi square meters. <clears throat> Math is passing me. Okay, so um, so that's it. Um, so now we know the derivative of arc tangent and arc sine. And basically, we know all the inverse trig functions because they're all they all work the same. Uh, so everything except for logs, uh, we can do. Logs is the next topic, and then we'll be done. So um, let's just do some examples of how how you would use this. Um, for example, find the derivative. So just functions that involve. Arctangent and arc sine. For example, the arctangent of the square root. So that's a that's a composition because you take the square root, then you take the arctangent of whatever comes out of there, of the, the arctangent of the answer. So the outside function is arctangent, the inside function is the root of x. So this is the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside. <clears throat> times the derivative of the inside respect to the respect to the variable. I if I write this in a way that it looks like they cancel, that means I did the chain rule right. So um, so what I mean here is is um, pretend that root of x is a is a letter. This is what everyone means when they write such a thing. So the derivative of, of the arctangent, well, I, I know I memorized it now. It's one divided by one plus u squared. So this is one over one plus whatever the variable is squared. Uh, in this case, the variable is, um, uh, is root x. So I have root of x here. Well, then root of x is what I'm going to plug into the derivative.
and the second term is the derivative well, the derivative of x to the one half that's one half x to the negative one half or in other words is one over two square root x so simplifying a bit just because i feel like it not because i have to this is one over two root x one plus x any questions so i'm still just all there is to taking derivatives is applying the rules applying the rules carefully not making mistakes maybe the, the algebra is complicated but i never have to i never not know what to do i always go well there's an arctangent i have to use the derivative of arctangent there's a composition i have to use the chain rule it's only a matter of figuring out which kind of function I'm looking at and using the correct rule. If a function is complicated, it might be, you know, it might be easy to make mistakes and it might be long, but I always know if you give me enough time, I will get to the end. Okay, I guess there's no questions. Uh, so what about the derivative of um, the, the square of the arc sign? So again, this is the this is a composition, but now the outside function is the square. The inside function is the arc sign. Um, so I'm just going to use the chain rule. Maybe I'll I'll do it. Maybe I'll give this a letter. So if I call this U, this is um, this is the derivative of U squared. But I cannot take the derivative of U squared with respect to X. I mean I can, but I can't do it without using the chain rule. I have to say that this is the derivative with respect to U, and then times the derivative of u respect to x. So you can do this without calling it u. Um, but uh, this might be easier. So the derivative of u squared respect to u now looks very easy. It's just the power rule. So what doesn't work is for this problem is just using the power rule and not using the chain rule because the power rule only works if the base is x. And then I have the derivative of u respect to x. The derivative of u respect to x is the derivative of arc sign. Because I just decided to call u the arc sign of x. <clears throat> and the derivative of arc sign is again, well, u is arc sign. And the derivative of arc sine is again something that I know by heart. Or something I could look up. I'm not in an exam, so. And the exam in this class is open book, so you could look it up anyway. Although, just because it's an open book doesn't mean you don't need to know anything because looking things in your book takes time. And that's it. So um, that's all there is to it. Just combine the rules, the new rules with the old rules and you can do all the derivatives. All right. I feel like in, in five minutes I can do the derivative of logarithm. And then you will go to sleep today knowing that you know all the derivatives. So the thing with the logarithm is that it's the inverse of the exponential. So if y is the logarithm of x, that would make x e to the y. 
So um, it's basically what I was just doing for the trick functions, except um, except turns out easier, but because I don't have to use trig identities here. So take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So if you take the derivative of x on both sides, on the left, you get just one. The derivative of x is one. On the right, you got to use the chain rule because um, I would like to say that that is just e to the y, but I didn't take the derivative with respect to y, I took it with respect to x. So if I wanted to switch what I take the derivative with respect to, that's called the chain rule. So what I want is the derivative of, of y respect to x. So I'm going to try to solve for it. So what is the derivative of the exponential? Quick, only have three minutes for you to tell me a derivative of the exponential. E to the y. E to the y, thank you. I didn't see your name light up, but you're a hero. Um, the derivative of the exponential is, in, is itself. So solving uh, for y prime, the derivative of uh, y is one over e to the y. And I could look at it like this, but I really don't want to because I started off saying that e to the y was x. So the derivative of ooh, y prime, the, 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 the derivative of logarithm is one over x. Holy crap, that is fascinating. The derivative of logarithm is one over x. That is just <laughs> so interesting. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, any questions? So we're not going to deal with uh, finding the derivative of like arc cosine. Arc cosine. Um, I mean, I'm not going to do it. Okay. It's it's the same. It's the same process. Or you could write sine in terms of cosine using ninety minus something and get it from there. But if you look at the answer, it's just the same formula except with a negative sign. <clears throat> Anyway, this is this is a function you should uh, derivative you should definitely definitely memorize, um, and that's it. Tomorrow we'll see how to use it for things. But now you know now you know every derivative. Anything you could write off and you could write using the functions we have a name for, and you know arithmetic operations and roots and compositions. All of those you can take a derivative of. So. You're now um, all knowing in the world of derivatives, except what to do with them. But that's nice. Congratulations. And that's going to be it for today.